Jesus. Sunday, Jesus. Sunday, Jesus. Sunday. Apostle Wells was here with us on Sunday. So let's praise God for our apostle. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He delivered a powerful word on yes, Sunday, he did. Uh, which we are going to do the honors of breaking down tonight. So we gave the man of God a break. Amen. <laughs> because <laughs> normally he would be in with us tonight, but he needed some time off. Well, you uh, know, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, man of God is that uh, the apostle was with us. Yes. He traveled from Maryland to mm -hmm. be with us this entire past week. Mm -hmm. He was with us on Wednesday as we celebrated our church anniversary. That's right. That's wait a minute. Hold on. I should have stopped <laughs> that music so fast. Y'all. Alter Worship Center turned four years old. Four years old. And you told the people on Sunday to throw their fours up. Throw your the fours up. Throw your fours <laughs> up. Throw your, I don't know if there's an emoji for fours. Is there? I don't know if there's an emoji well, for fours. Well, there's a fist emoji. Hang on. Let me, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's shout this out real quick. People of God, Alter Worship Center is four years old. Amen. Hallelujah. We Amen. praise God for that. Amen. And when our theme was all in together. All in together. What does that mean, together. Pastor Sierra, before we break down the weeknights and all of that? What does that mean? We have so much to recap you know, from last it, Tuesday. Yeah, I hope people can see your shirt because it means just oh. that unity. Yeah. And a um, <laughs> plug. Go ahead, mark it, baby. Mark it out. You know, the thing is, is that we're all in this together. Yes. And a lot of times we like to look at certain people who have titles or certain people who have advertised yeah. their assignment. But if you have been brought to a particular place, you have been brought for a particular assignment. Mm -hmm. And whatever your assignment is, whatever your journey is, it, it is expected of you to work that thing. So um, that title alone with us coming together, we're all, in four years, yeah. we're, we got this far for those four years, but there's so much more that needs to be done. There's so much work that needs to come forth, yeah. and we're going to be able to do that and do that together, but we're going to be all in. We're not going to be um, holding just some part. Mm -hmm. We're not just going to be throwing, you know, maybe a little bit or not. No, we got to be all in. In order for this thing to grow, in order for God to get the um, the glory out of this, we got to we got to sacrifice, and we got to give it our all. Right, right. Don't half step it that's what that means man of god absolutely because the <laughs> bible tells us we have to love the lord with all that's it it, it names body parts that's it. our heart our mind mm. our strength we have to love the lord with all so you're absolutely right pastor sierra so the people of god was looking for uh the four i don't think uh, I apple think has caught on to the four <laughs> fingers yet it's cool but we got hands we got uh, uh the brother, number four yeah brother omar Amen. Uh, the men of god captain he puts out uh, the number four in yes this section. yes so listen people of god we're four years in mm -hmm. um and that's beautiful because there's a lot of churches that did not make it that far Amen. Uh, there's a lot of ministries that did make it beyond four and couldn't make it past another year of wherever they were so we counted right. all joy right. to be able to still be standing and ministering God's word and God's Amen. gospel. So on Wednesday, you were saying we were here and Apostle yeah. was here with us. So go ahead and recap for us, please. Absolutely. So we had uh, uh, something different ministries come mm -hmm. and join us on Wednesday. Uh, we had a fellowship church on Friday. Listen, Friday reminded me of like old school Old school, school church, Pentecostal. Friday know? night. I'm used to that kind of church. <laughs> Terry and night service. Um, and then God the Unlimited there. He said, okay, let's continue this over and take this into uh, Sunday. Sunday and yeah. on Sunday morning service, Apostle, he taught a dynamic word. Yes, he did. The word literally wrecked the house. Um, it literally uh, was a foundation, um, you know, added to the foundation in which we will ultimately be because sometimes we have a tendency as individuals to look at what we currently are. But mm -hmm. I love that the word was able to give us a better direction and instruction. And what is it for you to be a believer and not to be able to receive instruction? And so I I know sometimes the instruction came as a rebuke, but it's a beautiful thing because God only chastised those that he loved. And I'm right. so excited that we were able to get that chastisement on Sunday morning. Yep. And just be able to identify. And I don't know about you, man of God, but I hope the people left the word on Sunday, the word that we received, and tried to go before the Lord and ask God, who are they? Are they a goat or a sheep? Right, because right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, we're responsible for the word that we receive. So you mm -hmm. have to know where you are, where you stand in the kingdom, because uh, mm -hmm. it's there are... Uh, the Bible tells us there are wheat, there's tear, yeah. uh, there's believers, there's unbelievers. I mean, there's always something else to the other side. So you can't think that you're just all in one way and don't know. You have to identify. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Bible tells us we need to identify. Are we hot? Are we cold? Because we can't be in the middle. 
uh, because God won't have anything to do with us at that point. So are you a sheep? Are you a goat? We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Amen. So beautiful, Pastor C. I appreciate that. Um, people of God, if you were here on, <laughs> they're still we, throwing the, uh, the fours up. I see amen. it. SB, that was, real, that was real clever. That was real clever. So are we still in, man of God? Because um, I have on my end interrupted, but how does it look on your end? Uh, it looks like we're still in. Okay. Um, so I don't see any, any issues. So people of God, if you're still um, with us, just let us know. We're with you. Just say something in the comments. Let us know. Uh, you hear sometimes the uh, live stream likes to get interrupted here and there. Uh, so hopefully we are good. I see we, a, a fine stream right now. Okay, awesome. Because we're definitely in the midst of, uh, you know, Florida weather right now. Right. Um, but despite all, God is still going to get the glory. So yes, I'm excited will. we yes, are able to uh, still be here. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, I, think we're, I think we're okay right now. It looks, looks like uh, we're good. Okay. So, okay. Uh, they all said right. we're here. All right, perfect, perfect. So... Good, good, good. All right, so just a little minor minor um, bump right there. So okay. we're okay. All right, praise be to the Lord. Yeah, because listen, you all help us to do better in these productions. Your giving and everything helps us to uh, strengthen everything that we do here. So we appreciate you in that. So, uh, all right, so now we're going to get into this word, mm -hmm. Pastor Sierra, that the man of God had dropped that, uh, dropped on us on Sunday. The title was Sheep Need, uh, Shepherd, Shepherd Needs need sheep, sheep, and Sheep, sheep Needs need shepherd. shepherd. Now, uh, go ahead and get your Bibles. If you don't have <laughs> your Bible, grab your phone, another phone, because you're on with us. So don't leave us. All right. <laughs> Find it. another way to do it. Get a computer, get a tablet, go get your old Bible or just stick around with us. We can throw the scriptures up on the screen as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but listen, man, the man of God uh, took us to John chapter 21. Now, keep in mind, people of God, we are in a series that is called Feed My Sheep mm -hmm. in this series so far has opened us up to the development of the church and the reason why the church has been developed past the Sierra. Right. So this is a building series. This is an edifying of the kingdom series. Mm -hmm. This is a series that really gives us perspective on the church. Uh, I believe people yeah. are going to be healed from church hurt type stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe people are going to have a better perspective of who their pastors are in, in yeah. their life, why they are in their lives. Why do we need pastors? Mm -hmm. Um, Go ahead, some more. Listen, I was just about to say and add to what you were saying that mm -hmm. this word that we're going to get beyond the fact that we are able to be re receive the blessings from it all, right? right? That we're also are in a particular season of our lives where we're getting direction. And many of us don't know where we're going, what we're doing, who we are even. And I think a lot of us as believers, sometimes we get it confused uh, with this misconception that when we come to the body of Christ, mm -hmm. that who we are he has to accept who we are they have to accept who we are and God is like no I'm calling you from that particular place right. and I'm trying to take you higher right. so our mindsets during this particular season I believe is going to change I believe um, our tendencies because a lot of us are looking like our tendencies mm. looking like wow. um, our family don't, generational don't, don't rush <laughs> past that Pastor Sarah you already knew it was coming right what say that again we, uh, when we, those of us that are believers, mm -hmm. when we, um, you know, join in fellowship with a particular ministry, I believe most of us start looking like our tendencies. Ooh. Well, we were born and shaped into iniquity. Those things means that those not something that we're going to just stick with for the rest of our lives, but those are things that we have taken on. So you look like you're a person with an attitude problem because of where you came from, right? Mm -hmm. Or you look like you are a person that was still because of your family, you know, so should, of the sin. So should we come into the house of God. I have an interesting question based on what you just said. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> and I want the people of God, y'all know I'm the question man. I'm going to ask you to ask I'm going to ask you questions that you need to answer in the in the comment section, let's okay? Let's do it. So let's get interactive. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. So all of you all that are in here with us tonight, I'm looking for you. Uh, April, my sister, you always transparent. I love Amen. it. Jessica's always transparent in here. Overseer, you in here? Go ahead and give us that old school breakdown of what I'm about to ask, okay? <laughs> uh, Mother Robinson and so many more, you guys are in here. Mm -hmm. Share this with me. Pastor Sierra just said we uh, begin to look like our tendencies. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that is a very, very interesting take on yeah. uh, when the sheep come in. And, right. when, and you know, so I want to say in the sense, I want to ask this question. So we come into the house of the Lord mm -hmm. and we say, God, change me, make me over and all right. these different things. Right. Right. But then we have this idea of being a product of our environment. Right. I grew up in the hood. So right. when you step on my toes, all I know is the fight. That's it. Right? If you uh if you bump into my baby, I'm I'm gonna cuss you out because oh, that's Lord. where I came from. <laughs> right. right. But you're in the house of the Lord and you're having transformation. Mm -hmm. So when people of God does 
the environment that you come from break away when you receive God. That's good. When, 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 I'm sorry, when does that time of I'm from the hood or I'm this and that or I grew up in this state or I grew up in this form, when does that break away when you receive God? At what point does that happen? Does it happen on day one? Does it happen later on down the line? Do you need some more time? Come on, be transparent. Let's be honest. Where are you at with that? Uh, can you... Um, can you share at what point does that break does that break off? I want to know what you all say. Amen. When does that stuff break off? Amen. Because uh with with Peter, it seemed like it took some time. With the woman with the issue of blood, it was immediately. Right. So everybody's a little bit, you know, different, different yeah. in their path. And I'm not giving you an escape to stay in anything. Exactly. I'm not giving you an excuse to be in anything. Exactly. But I'm saying with you where you come from, was your environment so strong that it's gonna take mm -hmm. some time to break off these generational issues or tendencies uh Pastor Sierra has spoken to? Because let's while they're typing, Pastor Sierra, you gotta understand we we married, yeah. so we come in with tendencies from as single people. That's all right. married people. They come in with tendencies of singleness. Yes, and, and that then it can be hard to break away from you those. gotta break away <laughs> from it to have holy matrimony. Mm -hmm. Come on, married people, say amen, amen in the comment section. So you have to break away from the player player, right. uh, from the Himalayas, right? You gotta break away from uh all of that stuff. You gotta break away from the homegirls and the homeboy. Th that tendency of wanting mm -hmm. that companionship is no more because you have now linked up with someone else. So amen. I wanna know. Is the kingdom enough for you to break off those tendencies? That's good. Where are you at in life? Let, let's That's see. They're, they're speaking in here. All in right. So section. go ahead and let me know where we're at, Pastor Sierra. I'm going to try to follow along with you. So we have Overseer Sierra Weddle who says that, and, and I believe uh, Sister uh, Sharice also echoes it. She says it's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. um, and then Overseer says, That's right. You know, the flesh dies daily. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, okay, good. I see that now. I'm just trying to follow. So yeah, uh, daily, I'm, I'm working on it, someone says. And then it's an ongoing process, meaning I'm still in the process of having things broken off of me that I've been carrying with me from day one of my yes. birth. From day, uh, the day I was conceived and I was in my mother's womb. When God says, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. Come on. I also knew the tendencies you would carry from that woman and from That's the seed it. that that man put in your wo that, that woman. That's it. I knew who you were and I knew what's, what you were going to be up against. So yeah. at what point, people of God, do you start to believe God for these things to break off and you no longer use those as excuses and handicaps Ooh. because your mother procrastinated? You cannot continue in that because yeah, your dad that was an weird. alcoholic. You should not continue mm -hmm. in that. Uh, go ahead, Pastor. You're just going to say something. I'm just trying you to know, stir up the conversation. You know, here. like it, the word of God talks about this too. You know, like, you know, there's certain things in our lives that, you know, we, that will follow us because it's a spirit, right? right? He was able to get everyone else in our family. And because it is a tendency, we talk about this and apostle have said this over mm -hmm. our live broadcast so many times that the enemy is not going to tempt you with something that you wouldn't normally be attached to, be connected yes. to, be entertained by. Yes. So why would he give you something? that is unrelated to you. He's going to give you something that is closely related to you. So there's a spirit, there's an old man, there's something that's way, way down right. that you've either suppressed or ignored. And at some point in your journey, the enemy is going to come and try to tempt you with those things. Right. And, um, and we just talked about it as I opened it up, like we've gotten to a place as individuals that we've become, like you mentioned, man, I got comfortable with the tendencies of who we are. So yeah. it's okay to keep these things as long as I still go to church and right. that's just it. But we're not being made over right. um as we're asking for but mm -hmm. we're not really ready mm -hmm. because deliverance is painful yeah. i don't know what type of deliverance that the the modern day church goes through but i remember being delivered from something and crying and pouring out my heart and speaking before the lord and it took fasting it took prayer i mean it took consecrating it took literally separating it yeah. took you know, I uh, sanctifying myself to come out from a thing that, um, I had to, I, I at one point had control over. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, a guy, it, it really is. I mean, the people are speaking to this now. It yeah. is your daily, you're going to be dealing with these things. You're going to be facing these things, but it's going to die daily, but there should be progress, right. progression happening in your journey. Absolutely. If there's no progression and you're stagnated or you're still the old person, yeah, well, that's another uh, another topic, but yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Uh, can you pull Jessica's comment real quick? I'm going to pull it up here. I want okay. you to 
Uh, read her comment real quickly. Okay, so she has two, actually. So the first one is, um, pastors, I want your opinions today on how we as reborn Christians can stand out better in a crowd. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know we've done some wretched things, but we're changed. Mm -hmm. We're living different, but how do we get the people to understand we are different now? Mm -hmm. Our friends and family still see the hood rat. Give me an example, please. <laughs> Change it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, here's the thing with um, with following Christ. You you don't have to necessarily do anything specifically that catches everybody's attention. That's following good. Christ catches people's attention. What are you talking about, Pastor Corey? What I'm saying is this. When you're following Christ, the attention is already on you because people can't figure you out. Oh, that's good. But when it comes to other faith, there are things that are obvious to them. For example, some put things on their heads. Some wrap their entire... I'm just going down the line of things you've seen. Mm -hmm. You know what those people are based on, you know, how they appear. So that stands out to you. So that's something that they do to outwardly say to you, hey, this is who I am. But the man that was on the cross with Jesus who said, hey, will you allow me to go with you? What did he do? He didn't... He didn't he didn't look like a Christian at come that on, moment. He on. didn't look like someone following Christ, but he began to say something. And, he, and, and so the attention wasn't really on him because of him following Christ. But but he took that moment to say, God, I want to be with you. I want to go with you. So what I'm saying is it's not necessarily something that we have to do to show people that we are a follower of Christ. It's our decisions. It's our it's our behavior. Yeah. It's our walk. Mm -hmm. And that man walked his entire life as a thief. He was being killed for it at yeah. that time in the biblical time. He was being persecuted for it and crucified for it. But the last moments he decided to follow Christ and Christ gave him as access to where he was going, which would be paradise. And so all of this is to say this. Mm -hmm. I'm not out here shouting. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. Da, right. da, da. I go to work and I'm a I'm a good man. I go to church. I'm a good man. I come home. I'm a good man. And I'm a good man because I follow Christ. Um, and so what I'm saying to everybody is this. We don't have to try hard to prove Christ. Christ will prove himself through you right. if you just open up and allow him in. And, and what I think happens is we try so hard to be super Christians that then we become what I've learned. Uh, my grandfather would say, you are so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. Yeah. We got to make sure that we're still doing good on earth and not just trying to be super uh, Christian and super over the <laughs> top. You know, you don't, you, every conversation, you don't have to be super, super, super uh, scripture uh, enthusiasts and, and shouting everything out because you're going to lose people that way. And Christ didn't do that. Yeah. So we, our example is following Christ because Christ did stuff. He healed people. And he said, don't say nothing. Don't tell nobody anything. Mm -hmm. Why? Why wouldn't Christ want that to be shared? Well, he already knows it's going to be shared, yeah. but he's not trying to take the glory and put it on the healing. He's trying to take the glory and put it toward the father. And so everything that we do in life, lead them back to the father. That's good. And that's how you stand out. When you lead them back to the father, the confused will find wisdom. That's the good. wise that think you're doing too much will be confounded. That's what the Bible tells us. Mm -hmm. So everything you do in life, just do it according to giving God the glory. And I promise you, you'll always stand out quite naturally. Go ahead, woman. God. No, you know, the Bible gives us the accountability, the responsibility as Christians to convince the gainsayers. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? I used to ask myself all this time, like, you know, uh, can you imagine, picture me as Thug C, and I'm trying to paint this picture, <laughs> but it's very hard because you can't get me to fight nobody today, but you know, I used to wear uh, bandanas every day to school. Right. Uh, family members knew that my the gift that I wanted for Christmas or birthday right. was just a bouquet of new bandanas, right? Right. Um, so I had this persona. I, I convinced people, even though I was at school getting all on a roll, right? Uh, I convinced them that I was a thug. Right. I just woke up one day and say, I want my name to be Thug C. Right. How I was able to convince them is because I kept saying that I 
I am a thug and this is who I am. Don't try me in school. But if you try me outside of school, then we're going to have a fight. Right. 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 <laughs> but I use that particular example, Sister Jessica, and anyone else who's like interested in trying to just find out how do we get to a place where we convince those who just don't believe, convince those who don't believe in a transformation of our lives. The Bible tells us in James just profoundly that we as individuals, it literally reads, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Mm -hmm. That's James 4 and 7. So the responsibility that we have in order to convince those who aren't quite convinced of your transformation is that we have to submit ourselves to God, just as Pastor Corey mentioned. Right. As we submit ourselves to God, the Bible says in that same scripture that uh, resist the devil and, and he, he will flee, flee from you. Right. The, the whole diagnosis of this particular passage is that we have to have the responsibility, um, the capability, mm -hmm. the ability mm -hmm. to be able to resist the enemy. So even though they're talking, even though they're treating you like your former man, even though um, they're responding, they're talking and telling other people that you're a pretend Christian, you are a hypocrite, you right. are this, you are that. I know who you really are. Listen, you got to ignore it. You got to yep. resist it and you got to submit yourself to God. And the Bible says that he has no other choice but to flee. Right. So he got to leave you. He got to move on. And as Pastor Corey mentioned, we have to position ourselves in a place where we're not always trying to convince people who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love what the men of God used to tell me uh, years ago. And we're talking about sheep need shepherd, shepherd need sheep. Mm -hmm. As we talk about this particular um, season that we in and the message that the men of God taught us, you need a pastor for instructions. Yes. Most of the times we try to, you know, take it upon our own knowledge right. um, and insight and experiences. And we try to apply that to a spiritual world when God has already set up an order for us to receive the word that we need so that we can become better Christians. So that when it looks like for other people, those tendencies, people don't look like it. I love God because when we go through deliverance with God, I no longer look nothing like the person I used to be before. I want to say this too, mm -hmm. in, in keeping us here in this, this, uh, sermon, uh, that the man of God preached, shepherd needs sheep, sheep needs shepherd. Mm -hmm. You know what the sheep, uh, he, he said this on Sunday, you know what happens to sheep after a while? They have to get shed. Mm -hmm. All that, all that, uh, that uh, what do they call it? Wool. All that wool that grows off of them. Come on. The shepherd has to come through and, sh and shave it, right? Not only that, the shepherd, not only does he take some off of you, because y'all get mad when the pastor say, don't do this. Don't go down that road. And, then, and you don't know what you're talking about because you ain't never been down this and this. And mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you're saying in your mind. And that's what you're going to end up doing. But then you're going to come back and realize the pastor was right. I shouldn't have went down this road. I shouldn't have did this and so, right. so forth. But the shepherd comes through to shave and bring off of the sheep all that wear and tear, all that, all that weight. They bring it. They take it off of you. You should thank God that your shepherd is trying to take some weight off of you. That's why you need a pastor. That's I good. used this, for example, on um, Saturday during the event, uh, looking at the young lady, Naomi Osaka. You, mm -hmm. you could tell there's something going on. and She needs some guidance. She needs some leadership. She don't need reporters asking her questions. She needs somebody to guide her through her trouble. And there's so many people like her, young Gifted, talented, skillful young people like her, they just need a shepherd. They need a guide. They need a pastor. Uh, so not only that does the shepherd take off of them, but the shepherd guides them. When mm -hmm. the sheep starts to roam too far, what does the shepherd do? He takes that staff with the hook on the end, and he takes it, and he sticks them, uh, or not sticks them, but he gets it around them and the pulls tongue, them yeah. back in or yeah. guide them a little bit further along the way where they need to go. Mm -hmm. All of this is to say this. Not only is this good for the sheep, but it's also good for the shepherd because it keeps the shepherd strong. It keeps the shepherd sharp. It keeps the shepherd uh, 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 alert and knowing what to look for. Maybe this sheep goes through this, so he protects this sheep. He goes, he leaves the yeah. 99 or not okay. the 100 to go after the one and go, you know, he leaves the 99 to go okay. for the one, mm -hmm. excuse me. And then now he knows what to do with the other 99 if one of them happened to go down a similar path. I've gone through this with this sheep, so now I know how to take you and not allow you to go down this path or give you some advice based on what I've gone through yeah. with this sheep. So it's good for both the shepherd and the sheep. We need each other because your life experiences help me to, I'm never going through such and such and such, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have, now I can help you go through this with the word of God. I'm going to give you principle. I'm going to give you scripture. I'm going to yeah. give you uh, wisdom on these things. I'm also going to give you perspective from the shepherd's mm -hmm. point of view because shepherds look from a vast entirely. That's why they're mm -hmm. able to see the wolves. What do you think uh, David was saying? 
I, I went after the bear, the yeah. lion, because I saw them. Sometimes the sheep don't see the bear and the lion because mm-hmm. they're grazing the field. So you don't see trouble when it comes. So right. it's good for both the shepherd and the sheep. We look after the sheep mm-hmm. and the sheep were able to do what they got to do. And then we go and get the sheep if they're in, in danger. But the sheep has to know its place. The shepherd has to know its place. And it all works together accordingly. Go ahead, Pastor Sierra. You know, I was trying to pull up a scripture as you was talking. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Apostle, he said so many awesome things. And men of God, I don't know if you're at your notes right now, but I found my way to my notes. And mm-hmm. one of the things that the men of God mentioned on Sunday, Apostle Wells, um, I don't even know if we gave honor. So please forgive us. Give an honor to the men of God, Apostle yes, Wells. absolutely. Amen. <laughs> I think we did earlier. Okay, yeah, so, I think we did. so the word of God that he ministered on Sunday, he honestly helped us understand exactly the need for both of uh, both of us. Right. Mm-hmm. The shepherd and the sheep. Mm-hmm. And that if God wouldn't give an assignment to pastors to just be in the house of God to preach to themselves, that right. wouldn't make no sense for him to do that. Right. And then for the sheep to be able to get the myster- mysteries that God is trying to reveal for whatever dispensation that we may be in. Right. But the men of God actually gave us this um, this insight, the mysteries mm-hmm. to help us understand the trans area that's happening. Right. So many of us um, may be sheep. And if you find yourself as a sheep and you have become numb to the word of God, nothing moves you. Um, maybe you are a, a, the type of individual right now because only you are able to identify where you are in your Christian journey. Yeah. So if you are the type of person right now today, I'm going to help you understand if you are the type of person that isn't, um, you're not uh, constantly studying the word of God. You're not constantly um, making it your business to get to the house of God so that you can get this word so that whatever gift that God has given you, that you're trying to use that gift so that you're not necessarily exercising your will, but you're exercising the will of God because what has been poured into you, you are able to practice everything. Your responses are different right. because of your relationship um, and your, your covenant with the father. So if you are in a particular a place right now in your life where you're numb to the word of God. Um, you're, you're not really focused mm-hmm. on trying to build kingdom or trying to, you know, exercise your, or use your gift for the Lord, for the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the word of God coming to church, it bores you. Mm-hmm. Listen, I, this is no, um, we're not trying to pick at you or anything like that, but I want to help you to see so that you can find yourself Find yourself into the word that we received on this past Sunday. Right. That means that you have possibly transformed. No, you did. You transformed into a goat. When you find yourself and you're not hungry anymore, mm. you are you are a goat. You're not a sheep. Because the, the difference between the, the apostle, he, he made it so clear, very profoundly. He said a goat is an individual who wants attention and a sheep is someone who wants to be left alone. Right. And I began to ask the father uh, on yesterday as I began to just, you know, seek the Lord about mm-hmm. the particular message that we read on read on Sunday. And mm-hmm. I, as I was reading my notes, the Lord showed me that the reason why the goat is the one who wants the attention and how uh, the sheep is the one who want to be left alone. The sheep can be left alone because they're following the instructions. They already have the discipline to be able to receive the word, digest the word and not take it as their own, but right. take it and try to find clarity. They don't need to be told what to do, where to go, how to pay. Are you you paying your tithes and offering, right? Mm -hmm. Are you coming to church? Are you not coming to church? Are you going to be tuned into Bible study? Are you know, they don't need that, but a goat who wants attention is going to be somebody who's purposely allowing a distraction to literally sit in the way of the blessing between them and God. Right. Like God literally, God is literally like, listen, I've given you someone because you are the sheep to push you. Like you said, man of God, right. <laughs> push you into the right direction to get back, back on course, to put you right in the pathway so that you can receive the blessing. Mm-hmm. And, and you're moving because you're being pushed to the area, but a goat can't be pushed because every time you're trying to give the word to them, they're bucking up against the word right. or there are, there's, trying to find another way or they're trying to prove their leader that the leader is wrong and that they are right. You know? Right. So, um, how do you know this woman of God? Uh, well, because I can honestly say in a time of my life, I was there where I felt like I can do it. I want to do it by myself. Right. I don't need nobody else and I don't need this and I don't need that. And that is the most, uh, Oh my gosh, dangerous place to be in mentally and spiritually. Yeah. Because again, you can be 
seeking the wrong attention and you're going to get caught up in some stuff. Mm -hmm. My God, that the, that the Lord is like, I told you, I would have warned you, but you couldn't hear my voice because you were so busy entertaining spirits right. that did not belong to me. I want to, I want to say this too, real quick, Pastor, if you could pull, um, pull acts, I think 26 and four. I believe that's the scripture, if, if I might be off on that. But I want to go back to your comment about tendencies, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about sheep and goats. So goats, maybe people don't understand the tendencies that goats have. Um, I think it's the, uh, I think it's 26 and 4. Um, let me see if that's it. No, I don't think that was it. Um uh, kicking against the pricks is what I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. So goats is, is, is typical for goats to do all these things like fighting and head butting and kicking. And normally when you see a picture of a goat, even in cartoons, you always see the goat kicking and fighting and all that, you know, all that anger and all that stuff. They're always trying to, you know, climb the, the highest, uh, status in the herd or, or so, so to say, they're trying to be the, the, the big one, the big boss and whatever like that. But there's a comment or a quote, rather, that says, you know, and I'm going back a little bit, too, on Jessica's comment earlier, too, about uh, standing out. You know, the loudest person in the room is not always the strongest person, right? Mm -hmm. That's a quote. Uh, the, don't believe that the loudest person is the strongest. Sometimes they're probably the weakest, and that's why they're, they're so loud. Well, mm -hmm. goats aren't as strong mentally as sheep are, and that's why when it comes to this topic, what we're talking about, goats are hard to deal with because they're always trying to prove or they're fighting or they're kicking or they're scratching or they're biting or they're headbutting. And so that's typical behavior for a goat. And so it's very loud. It's very loud. Yeah. It's messy. It's dangerous. It's just too much. It's, you know, people that's doing too much, they're like goats. <laughs> when you got people that's just loud for no reason, just always fighting, just always kicking, just always screaming, always in drama. That is a goat like tendency. Sheep, are humble, they're meek, they're Christ-like, right? That's why that's why they call Jesus the Lamb of God, right? And so this is what we're trying to uh, share with you. Uh, you got that scripture? Yeah, I have it, Acts 9. Uh, did you want to do 5 through 6? Um, uh, let me just go get, me find to, it. get me to... Um, okay, let me go to there. Just the one, the one verse in particular should work. But uh, this is what was told um, to Saul before he was converted into Paul, he, Paul, uh, Saul was a goat. Paul was a sheep. There, there's two. <laughs> when Saul was uh, out there persecuting Christians, he was a goat. And then when he converted over to Christ uh, and, and being an apostle, he became a sheep. You have it, Pastor Sierra? Mm -hmm. Can you read that for us real quick? Uh, Acts 9 and 5, it says, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Mm -hmm. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Yeah. And so basically what he's saying is this. This is what goats do. Goats kick. Mm -hmm. It's hard for you to keep kicking against the pricks. Why you kick? You don't even realize what you're kicking is going to hurt you. It's hurting you. It's hurting you. It ain't hurting me. It's hurting you. So when you kick back at the kingdom, it's not hurting nobody but you. It, it. It's not hurting the church. It's hurting you. It's right. not hurting the pastor. It's hurting you. We just hate to see you go through this. So we try to come in as shepherds and say, can you stop kicking? Can you stop yelling? Mm -hmm. Can you stop biting? Can you stop headbutting? Just sit down somewhere so we can convert mm -hmm. you over so you can see all this evil in, inside of you all this hurting come on thug see let's get you out of this so we can thank turn you, you into pastor sierra yeah, thank you, amen and so <laughs> this is what it's like so typical behavior y'all can look this up for a goat you'll find them headbutting kicking biting and fighting that's typical behavior for a goat right and so it's time for us to come out of this you need a shepherd if all you're doing is fighting kicking screaming uh and you and, loud for no reason mm -hmm. and you just that person needs to get to the altar. Yes, right. ma'am. No, but silence is also loud as well. Like if Absolutely. you are purposely, um, you, you know, I've, <laughs> I've seen people like in my years, I don't want to tell everything uh, to expose nobody or no thing. Mm -hmm. But I've, in the years of me being in church, and that's been a long, long time. Long time, Pastor. <laughs> How are you? But a long, long time, Oh, you want to tell, okay. Uh, right. But it, you know, I've seen a lot of different things. I've experienced um, a lot of different things myself. So if you're purposely just, you know, using your phone in church, texting um, instead of receiving the word of God yeah. or hearing from the word of God, think about this. When we're in a business meeting, you don't take out your cell phone and text during a business meeting. I hope you don't right. anyway, because it will consider be considered to be rude. Those mm -hmm. are different just signs. You don't or, do it during job interviews. Right. Or if you're, you know, 
the word you're being prophesied to, or you're receiving these word, um, you know, whatever the word is that is coming forth. If you're purposely just saying, I don't take it, I don't receive it. And just because you didn't say it out of your mouth, you did it in your heart. And that's another, and you thought it in your mind. Mm -hmm. Those are also opportunities where you have indeed kicked against the pricks. And right. you know, like the man of God mentioned, like these things, you're making it worse for yourself. God is like, I'm setting up a way for you, you know, that is sweet. I'm making it easier for you. Uh, and when I say easy, I don't mean like life is going to be easy for you. What mm -hmm. I mean is I'm trying to give you the instruction so that it will be better for you because most of us, we are, we cannot escape certain situations that God would allow us to go through. Like right. sometimes it might be an illness that God may allow because the enemy has the responsibility um, and has access mm -hmm. to be able to think about Job had access to um, the child of God. You know, you being a child of God, he does have access. God does give permission, mm -hmm. but he can only, he only has a limited time to be able to expose you to a thing, right. but whatever that is, if you're not strong enough, that will, you'll be able to find and see where you are. If you are a sheep or if you are a goat, because a sheep is knows without a shadow of doubt that God is going to see me through this. Right. She's she or he is not going to be worried, not going to be nervous. They're going to be truly committed. But one of the things that the men of God talked about on Sunday is yeah. that a sheep we're looking for sheep who are committed. You can't be a sheep and not be committed anyway, right, because right. if you're not committed to the process, if you're not committed to change, if you're not committed to transformation, then these things, we're just doing the bodily exercise and we're just doing all of this for practice. And right. that's just it, you know? Right. Um, you were going to say something? Yeah. Again? Just, uh, just looking at a couple of comments real quick. I, I love, uh, Jessica's comment right here. This is, this is what you need right here. She says, I've been a goat. Now I'm a sheep. I Hallelujah. need my uh, uh, feed me shepherd. Keep me safe from the enemy. <laughs> if we had more, more people in the body of Christ that would say, listen, I was this before, but now I'm this, I'm following Christ. And not only am I following Christ, it's okay. Pastor continue to feed me and keep me safe out of danger, man. We, yeah. we would be so far along and, and together together you're right and it's um and and it's not just as a church right but as a faith as christendom we will be much further than we are today right. we're still i mean i came up i came to christ at nine years old at 33 years old we're still talking about hypocrites in the church i mean come on this yeah. is the same conversation yeah. at what point are we going to be focusing not on necessarily hypocrites or somebody harmed me somebody did something against me and when are we going to get to a place in our walk with Christ where we're starting to talk more about miracles than we are what somebody did to us while we were in the church right. because or outside of the church or whatever the church has done or whatever this is this we need to get so much further I'm telling you people God I'm in a season right now that if God is allowing instructions to come forth that means that he's getting us prepared for what he's about to reveal to us right. and if he's about to reveal something I want to be in a position where I can handle what he's going to show me mm -hmm. because God can show you some things that cause your mental to if you're not strong enough he'll cause your mental or not him the enemy mm -hmm. will cause your enemy your 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 mental state to be disturbed in mm -hmm. a way where you are no longer be the same yeah so we got to get to a place where we are prepared to receive what god is trying to give us yeah. and in this we got to get committed we yeah. got to be committed at some point if you have never been committed to one thing in your life it proves true to your your life, mm -hmm. your life cycle. We we started this off. It's about a life cycle, right? And this is what we're trying to um to learn. If the pastor is not committed to his sheep, and the sheep is not committed to his pastor, then we cannot be. A, we're not able to see what God is trying to show us. Right. If the pastor is not doing his job, and the men of God came to during the second service on Sunday and mm -hmm. talked about what a pastor job is. As believers, we got to be bold enough. If you are rightfully Paying your tithes and offering to a to a kingdom, to uh to God's sanctuary for mm -hmm. God, the uh, building of God's sanctuary mm -hmm. and his kingdom. You can go to your shepherd and say, Shepherd, I need this. Right. But and we have to get to a place where we'll allow the shepherd to continue to do the work that he or she has been called to do. Mm -hmm. Because it is when he or she does do their work, then we can grow up as responsible right. individuals. And we will also be able to um, use the gift that God has right. given us. Where are all the prophets and there's and I, I think we talk about this all the time 
there are more prophets than there are lay members. There are more. Man, don't even <laughs> there get, are don't more get prophets started. than there don't, are ushers. Don't get started. There don't more, get started. You know, and, and there's too many prophets um, in this world with this titer for us to not be able to see the evidence Listen. and the works and the mysteries, uh, the, the mysteries, the gospel being un- unfolded right. and, and told to us. Listen, everybody is not going to be called to preach. Let's just go ahead and hit that right on the head. Mm-hmm. Everybody is not going to be and is not called to be a preacher mm-hmm. or a five-fold ministry leader. That's not for everybody. There are reasons why few are uh, chosen. Some are called and few are chosen. Right. There's a reason for that because God doesn't need all of us to be doing the same exact thing. There are some of us that really, really just need to receive this word and walk in this word. And there's yeah. some of us that really have a gift to deliver God's word. And he trusts us with those communications. But there are some people that just think that it's time for me to step up. Maybe it's not. Most likely it's probably not, mm-hmm. but maybe it's not. And so there's some, there's some reasons why God has it that yeah. way, because if the whole world was preachers, then we all would be in heaven. Listen, man of God, <laughs> let me tell you, and I'm, I'm going to give you the truth and the honesty before yeah. I go into this next comment that apostle, and literally I'm going through my notes, people of God. So right. I'm, I'm only saying what apostle has already taught us on Sunday. Right. So don't be mad at me. Cause apostle came and did this word now, <laughs> but the men of God, um, you, you know, one of the things that the Lord showed me, even you know accepting the calling on my life he literally showed me you know you could be excited the lord says okay this is the word you know i called you to do this but before i was called to do anything the lord told me that i can't i cannot do anything until i went back and forgive people Mm -hmm. and people don't not many very many people know this but because he's like i the lord literally showed me that you could not do my work even though i saw it i saw what the lord um would have me to do go back to tampa florida do that that entire scene and i'm i'm actually seeing the evidence being um like unfolded even today still right. to this day but after that point immediately before i could even accept it the lord showed me that i could not do the work unless i mean if i didn't like people mm-hmm. or a, like a, a few people that i didn't care too much about and i had to go to these people individually that wasn't my pastor didn't have to tell me to do that um you know, nobody didn't have to tell me to do that. I didn't even read the word of God for the word of God to tell me to do that. Yeah. He's like, there's no way in the world you'll be able to preach the gospel not liking people. Right. So I had to literally go before the throne and it took a whole lot of out of me. <laughs> Sanctification. It really did. And fasting to, to get all of that stuff out of me. And right. then for me to be able to go to these people, humble myself mm-hmm. and have a one-on-one with them and apologize and say, I forgive you for yeah. some things. And it took a lot for that but i'm using that as an example because there's a lot of us that are saying that god is calling us to be this or they know that they have a gift or whatever the case may be but listen you got to get committed to a place committed enough where you know exactly who you are mm-hmm. because otherwise you're just literally trying to outlive someone else's shadow mm-hmm. or be another there's a whole lot of uh, preachers too are trying to be other preachers oh, there's and, a lot of replicas and out god here. is saying that that's not enough listen when you get to heaven i heard somebody say this before when you get to heaven, they're not going to want another T.D. Jakes. They're not going to want another Sarah Roberts. Right. They're going to want a, a, a Jessica a Bartles. They're going to want a Sharice Tanksley. They're going to want a Loretta Brown. Right. They're going to want a, a, a Trina Stroll. They're going to want a D- Derek Hall. God bless you, man of God. Yes. They're going to want you. And we're trying to impersonate other people. Come on, people of God. Listen, we have to get to the place. And this is what the man of God was talking about as it relates to us as sheep. Mm -hmm. We have got to know who we are. Right. There's too many identity crises that are going on in a body of Christ. And it needs to be, we need to dismantle that thing. There's a, there's a difference between admiring and then just being a full out carbon copy. Like we don't need no more, you know, like you said, these people are taken. Joel Osteen, he's taken. It that he's in it. He's in he's in his mantle, he's taken. T D Jakes still here in his mantle, he's taken. I mean, we don't need a replica. Just be your authentic self and let God start to pull and prune and, and feed you with everything that is authentically you. I'm That's comfortable it. with being Pastor Corey Singletary or take the pastor. I'm very p- comfortable with being who I because am. Because even in who you are, there's yeah. still more growth. Absolutely. There, who, there's so much mm-hmm. more to who I am that I, I don't have, have time to go dive into be uh, this other yeah. person. Like I, I admire God for making me. But you, it's your story. The who you are is still being revealed. Right. 
Right. Because if it's not, and I think you said this one Sunday before, then that would have mean, meant that we have already arrived. Yeah. And we none of us have arrived until we got to heaven. And, so. and, the, and also, too, Pastor Sierra, God didn't make duplicate apostles either. Mm -hmm. Those men all were very different in their own likes and on their own ways. Apostle mm -hmm. Paul didn't come in to be Judas. He didn't replace Judas. He, he came in and he, he did the part that he was supposed to do. Peter did the part he was supposed to do. John did the part he was supposed to do. So what I'm asking you is, as a sheep in the kingdom of God, when are you going to do the part that you are supposed to do? You can't do our job. And try to do yours at the same time. No, we got a specific job to do. And that was one of the quotes that Apostle, I was trying to lead up to it, but one of the quotes that Apostle said was, every sheep or member has a job to do. And so we as shepherds have to assign you to those jobs or to those works or to those tasks, or the Lord is going to share with you what those are, and you're still going to need us That's to good. help you along the way get to what it is that God is calling you to. Um, so all of that is to say that we all collectively mm -hmm. have work to do. Shepherd needs the sheep and the sheep needs the shepherd. And if I cannot assign you to do what it is that we need to be done in the kingdom, then altogether this body is not functioning right. properly. Right. And in, in that people of God, like, you know, because sometimes, you know, especially amongst our generation, people mm -hmm. will think that it's about, you know, because we're so used to seeing like the instant gratification right. that we're looking for um, popularity. We're looking for not notoriety. We're right. looking for um, that, you know, just in general as, as a body of people, because sociology tells us that we, uh, people would like to feel belong. Right. And, and because of that, that's why they join in with something. And right. maybe that is what scientists have discovered, and it makes more sense. I totally understand, and I totally get it. But I'd like to say that we belong, mm -hmm. not like to feel like it. It's a feeling they go and come. But to know who you are, to know what you've been called to, um, and to understand how this thing works, the people, and the men of God set it up on, um, and I wish he was here, we're going to have to bring him back at some point, but the scripture tells us that we minister, the leaders, they minister so that it may be food for the both of us. Yeah. And so how does that look like? So it can be meat, something sturdy, something that's going to fulfill us, something that's going to secure us. And I love what my brother Derek said. Um, for us to be prepared. This word is going to prepare us. Mm -hmm. This stuff that we are getting, the leaders, when they're delivering this word, it's going to bless both of us, not just um, spiritually, mm -hmm. but we're going to see some things physically as well. Because if I can teach you the go through a certain type of route so that you get more money, you'll bless the kingdom. And as you bless the kingdom, you might want to go and open up a business. And guess what? Right. The, the kingdom is there to support you as you're open up your business, but we can't have help and support it'll be against the will of God to help and support anyone right. who's not committed to paying their tithes and offering right. or who's not committed to um, just their, their stewardship. They're not good stewards because if I help you open up your business and you've already shown God, you've already shown us that you're not a person who's going to commit to anything. And so we have got to literally, an apostle said he was going to talk about this at some point, but when it comes down to the commitment level, mm -hmm. all of us, are guilty of starting something and not finishing it. Right. Starting something, not completing it. Starting something, and we it, it, it is against the will of God. And we know this because when Jesus was here on his earth, he said, it is finished. Yeah. He, he didn't just say, take me to the cross, God, I, I'm done now. No, he still had to live here on earth even when well, it got hard. And, and pa he, even when he wanted to pass that cup, he still had to drink from it, even though it was painful, even though it was bitter, Very. even though it you know, was strong, even yeah. though it was heavy. He knew. And when he was on his way, right, to Jerusalem, when he was on his way with those people uh, and still performing miracles, he knew that he was on his way for his next for his execution. Right. The disciple wasn't even prepared already, but yet and still he knew that there was a work that he has to do. When is it that us as believer, as believers are going to get to a place where we know for a fact that there is something that God is calling us to finish? Mm -hmm. When are you going to finish something? When are you going to be committed to whatever it is that whatever ministry you're connected to, um, whoever the leader is, when are you going to be committed? What does commitment look like? They used to say back in the day, soul out, work out your soul salvation. Right. And that wasn't an easy word or easy pill to, to swallow. And the reason why men of God, and I know you can attest to this is because we were always in church. Yeah. 
We were in church on Monday. We we were we had church mm-hmm. at least like a service at least three days out of seven. And two that, services on Sunday. That, no, but listen, <laughs> that was just the service. Mm-hmm. There was still a daytime prayer, noonday prayer. Y'all, y'all see, y'all too young. Y'all, y'all, y'all not seasoned oh, enough. Lord. They don't know about <laughs> noonday prayer. Mm-hmm. Then you had Tuesday night Bible study. Then you had Friday night Tarian service. Then you had Sunday morning Sunday school. Then you had Sunday service. And then after that, you had a Sunday night service. And, and there was no vacation. We didn't take vacation. <laughs> Did you realize I didn't even deal with? The, the the rehearsal part of anything. I didn't deal with the meeting part of it. I mean, we were in church four right. to five, sometimes every day of the week. Listen, then we had meetings as well. I, I didn't even touch that. I just said service, the the protocols before service, and that, that right there was at least right, three to four days right. by but itself. The, but what I'm seeing and explaining is that because... This generation is fatigued. Well, not just this generation. It's this dispensation. This time, because yeah. Because it's, 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 it's not even just the generation of people. It's, it's the entire <laughs> right. fold. And, um, and we as individuals, we have to get back to a place where we're just committed. And it, am I saying, you know, God gives us wisdom. God makes it easier for us. The next generation, I do believe... They Things get easier because of what the generation, the foundation that they laid before us, things get easier. I believe that is the will of God Mm -hmm. um, because of what his word tells us. Uh, But even in the midst of all of that, we have to learn how to truly uh, uh, believe that if we build something, there used to be a time when people would build something and be excited about the thing that they built. Um, but, and that's what we have to do. We have to understand the importance of who we are. And right. I think the man of God providing this particular word, helping us to understand the our, who we are and how important we are and how much we bring value. Right. And I think because there's a loss in the value system that we're mm. unable to bring that same principle to the house of God because right. we, you think about if you know you are a value, you uh, a value, and you know that you're valuable, that you're going to be an asset to whatever it is that you join in with. Um, you know, and here a natural example when I when I joined in covenant with Pastor Corey, hey, my lo- I, I knew that. Oh Lord, help the people! <laughs> I knew talk that about it. I was going to bring and add value to his life yes. and vice versa. So we have to be able to get to a place that whatever we're coming and getting and covenant with, uh, you know, even when it comes down to Christ, because we're not just having just a re- relationship with God. God don't like that boyfriend, girlfriend stuff with him. No, it, he is the bride. You know, well, the church. There was no boyfriend or girlfriend in the biblical day. Right, there, right. But you, I don't want to. That's another revelation. I know. We ain't going to do that. We ain't going to do that. <laughs> what I'm saying to you, uh, to the people people of God is for us to understand what the value system and how just important you are as a sheep that you're not just there just to come you're there to put your hand to something and I I talked about this um, in one of our women's prayer on a Monday night just find one thing in the ministry just one thing if your one thing is I'm going to start coming to church every Sunday focus on that just for a little while you won't always be there because at some point God is going to convict you and there's not enough true conviction in a house of God right. and this is why we have a disarray for in a church but when we get to a place as people we would and we commit to that one thing if that's paying your tithes and offering mm-hmm. um, if that's you know coming to church and coming to church on time mm-hmm. if that is you know using your gift and being the best Best praise and worship leader, the best usher, the best honor, honor bearer, uh, apostle calls them honor bearers, the best, whatever, whomever you are, once you've identified that, or if you don't know, go to your leaders. Good leaders should be able to go before the Lord, ask the Lord, since they give an account for your soul as they should, because that is a responsibility on their hands. Mm -hmm. If they are not, um, they should be able to come back to you and say what you can do Mm -hmm. to, uh, to get things rolling and to, so that there can be a kingdom, uh, the thing that comes forth. But, and then also the shepherd um, needs to do his and her job. Right. Needs to sit with you one-on-one to find out why you're not growing and to find out where where can you do better mm-hmm. so that you can be better. Because if, the, if you are in a particular position where a leader just wants the, um, the attention, that's a Nah, I'm, just, I'm not gonna go there. But if, if he just, if we, he we, or she, no, you can go there. I'll back you up. There is I, some attention yeah. seeking leadership in the body of Christ, and mm-hmm. that's not helping to project the body forward. It's it's crippling the body. And um, 
I, I hear the spirit of the Lord using this, this term out of order. When, mm-hmm. when you wake up in the morning and your left foot don't go uh, in properly placed in front, when the right foot has put itself in front and, and it don't alternate, there's something wrong. The body yeah. is out of order. Yeah. When, when you uh, lift both of your hands, but one seems to not be lifting properly, something is out of order. Mm-hmm. Something is not right. So when that happens to our natural body, That's Pastor Sierra, you know what we do? We go to set a doctor's appointment. But what happens in the spirit when the people see the church is out of order? Do you not make an appointment come to on. correct this thing? That's when are good. you going to make it? Come on, Holy Spirit. When are you going to make an appointment to correct this thing? You know you've been hoarding this money. My wife done said uh, tithes and offerings about six times a night. <laughs> so the spirit must be telling you, you need to release. You sitting, you'll stingy yourself still sitting on this thing. Just release it. What are you going to do with it? What more can you got what? you need you bought what you wanted i mean my god just release that thing and give the lord what's but due to him even if you don't man, yeah god, i'm not to cut you off yes. and i'm gonna have just really quickly mm-hmm. but even if you do not have what you have this is what commitment looks like and this is what god is calling for right he even if you don't have all that you have all that you want all those things the bible says seek ye first the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of god. god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you right. that means that if i continue to seek the kingdom of god people of god i want to tell you this and, and really quickly men of god and it's yours mm-hmm. but i literally and, and i can say this i literally gave god my all it didn't matter what it is that i was doing it could be uh, me dancing dancing in the ministry if i didn't I didn't care if I broke my back. I didn't care if I broke my neck. I didn't care if my leg broke. And this is what I mean because, you know, one of the women of God taught me this. Her name is Sister Gina. Hallelujah. She said <laughs> it, it pays that if you are giving your God your all, then if God took you that night, you would have you would make it into heaven because you have given God your all. Right. And, you know, even apostle has taught this as well. You have one thing that you're struggling with. And you focus on that one thing and you don't want to give God your all because you're focusing on this one thing. You're going to have that one thing send you to hell. No, that is the thorn. That is the thing that is in your flesh that you're that you're struggling with. OK, you got that one thing. But if you continue to commit yourself to God, mm-hmm. I'm telling you that one thing will be minute to God because you are giving God. Come on, David. Listen, God would literally not look past it. He's going to correct, correct you at some point right. in your journey. Yeah, but you don't have to have that thing, that tendency to tell who you are. You are a child of God. So if you commit yourself to God, yes. listen, you seek ye first the kingdom of God. At the age of thirty three, people of God, I promise you, anything that I have asked in this particular season, it has come to pass. Pastor Corey and I went to this event on Saturday. Really quickly, I asked for <laughs> the highest. Um, this you are example. not quick. <laughs> I asked ahead, for girl. the highest that was on the spinning wheel. I turned that spinning wheel. I said, I want a hundred dollars. And you know what the people said? I turned, spent the wheel. I got a hundred dollars. Yeah. Then they said, um, they had the highest percentage on the investment property. Uh, and then guess what? I spent the wheel. I said, you know what? This is at another station. I said, I spent the wheel and I, I got it. Then I said, oh, I want to raise. I, uh, not not raise. I, said, I didn't spin a wheel. I just put it in the paper. And guess what? I got it. Mm-hmm. So in this season right now, I'm telling you believers, I'm telling you people, God, if you want health restored, you're going to get it. If right. you want, if you continue to seek the kingdom of God, if the, the first thing that is on your mind is I got to bless the kingdom. Listen, if we, we have to be positioned in a place that even if our home our home is missing groceries. God is like, listen, don't worry about that. I'm going to send somebody to give it to you. Right. Now, what are you saying? People go, what are you talking about? I'm not taking from my home. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, God, your heart, the pureness of your heart and the position of your mind, all of those things there, God will give you double for what you give him. And when in the end, you'll look back and you'll be like, man, God, you literally are setting my life up. Yeah. I, will, I allowed for so many years um, impatient. To, to get in the way to, of the blessing that God had for me. And it got me in deeper, deeper uh, trouble, that a deep deeper pit, you know, people of God. So we have to get to that place, man of God. And I'm sorry, I, I had to throw in that scripture, man of God. No, it's fine. It's fine. I, I wanted to give this example um, here too as well. But 
what I was saying earlier about making an appointment, I have I have several examples of people that made an appointment to get a thing fixed. Mm, go ahead. Here's one. There was a, a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus mm-hmm. who sat on the side of a sidewalk who, when he heard Jesus was coming into town, he began to shout, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What was he doing? He was making an appointment so That's Jesus good. could meet him and he could meet Jesus. He That's couldn't good. see Jesus. He didn't know which direction he was coming from. Was he coming from behind him? Was he coming from uh, uh, in front of him? He couldn't. He was blind. He did not know. Come on. But that did not hinder him from making an appointment. I'm using the word appointment, but making an effort Come on. to correct what is wrong. He knows that he's blind, but he also knows he's the healer. Jesus is the healer. So That's there's good. one example of someone who had a serious issue and made an appointment to see Jesus and to get this thing corrected so they can live properly. Who else? There was a woman that had an issue of blood for 12 some years and she's given her appointments to doctors and physicians. And the Bible says none of those things had worked. She spent all she had and still none of those things had worked. And she even heard about a man named Jesus coming into town. So she broke protocol and fought through the crowd of men because men were always in front of women. So not only did she come from the back, she had to fight men. Can you think about a weak woman trying to fight through a crowd Mm. of men to get to Jesus and Jesus surrounded by men, his disciples are there. And she was, she was uh, ambitious enough and strong enough And wise enough to just reach her hand because she had said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, she made the appointment when she made up in her mind, if I could just touch. And so I'm asking you, when are you going to set your appointment up with the kingdom of God to correct your issues? If you're late everywhere, get to the kingdom on time so we can shepherd you and correct you in your lateness. If you cannot manage your money, get to the kingdom so we can help you manage. If you are sick get to the kingdom uh call upon the elders one thing i love is our sister was going through something this uh past week and she called upon the elders of the church which is myself my wife apostle and and she called and alerted us of what was going on and we all came together as a band of brothers and sisters and we began to pray because prayer changes things i wear this band on my wrist that says jesus changes everything so if sickness is there jesus turns that entire thing into health into wholeness and so i'm saying to you when you know these things why don't you just make an appointment if you know you can't see why don't you make an appointment if you know you're not well why don't you make an appointment if you know you always late if you know you're not managing your money right if you know you can't discipline your children if you know you You your husband ain't (laughs) right if you know your husband ain't right if you know this relationship ain't right if you know it's taking you away and you know whatever you know is the issue make an appointment why are you sitting around in this foolishness in this mess you know who does that kind of stuff pigs swine they wallow in mess they enjoy that but you are a sheep you're not supposed to be wallowing around in the mud that's not what you do no so Amen. It's time for you to make an appointment, people of God. Come on. Somebody say amen. 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 All right, woman of God. So, I do have a testimony here. Yeah, let's do it. So Sister April, um, she typed, and I had to go up a little, but she mentioned, she says, um, it took me a long while, mm-hmm. five years ago. I had a dream a few years ago that something happened. Um happened to me once I realized it it was true I've been learning to love myself and I felt God tugging at my heart right in that moment when I realized that what happened to me and then I started meeting people who were Christians and church goers okay (laughs) I started going to church just because and then I began to listen to the word then I started believing and now I wanted to I want to obey God's word for a long time I was following God's word breathless with no knowledge of the Lord or the Bible and my eyes were closed it was dark but I have a pastor church and I see the light at the end of the tunnel Praise God. I'm still learning and still growing and I really want to amen and I, I love that because 
at some point, you know, we know a little bit more about this woman of God's yeah. testimony. And she she told us, she said she was in a very, very dark place. Yeah, she did. And I, I love God so much because there's an order that if we follow those things, if we follow the order of God, if we follow, follow the will of God, if we obeyed or align our life uh, with the word of God, people of God, I'm telling you, you will feel um, a better and a greater peace. Yeah. Um, so much so that the Bible says that we'll have peace that surpasses all, all understanding. understanding. Yep. That means man won't even understand how you have the peace and the calmness that you have when you've been through what you've been through. That if you really knew the entire testimony, you wouldn't understand why you're still able to stand and be able to respond with love despite what you've been through. Right. I'm telling you, people of God, that all you have to do is just make up in your mind and make it up tonight. Yeah, tonight, right I'm now. I'm going to learn to commit myself so that the, I can hold the, the shepherd who um, is assigned over my life with uh, doing the things that the Bible says that he and she, the fivefold ministry, should be doing to perfect me. If you're not getting perf per, uh, perfected in any way, <laughs> if you don't see yourself growing, um, being getting appearing to even be perfect right if you're not even um have that appearance that means that you uh may just be a goat yeah. you're kicking against the prick and they're unable to do the work that they fully want they want to do and i saw somebody say in the comment section that all you have to do is just come as you are i love that she said that because in the beginning at some point in your relationship with god when you first come through come as you are you will begin to be renewed restored repaired and now my cry sometimes i can't even cry no more of the things that i've been through mm. i can't even make the tear come out yeah. you know uh because of life with god and and i tell you people of god that's exactly where god wants us to be but if you're still in the ministry and saying that god is your father and 10 years you're still my god 10 years later you're still in the same place yeah spiritually let's not even go spiritually let's go naturally if you're still, and the Apostle talked about this on Sunday as well, you're working one job with the same income and no business, no other things coming in. Listen, you're in a poverty place, and God is like, I want to move you from that place, but I want to give you wisdom. But you got to sit still enough for sit somebody still. to give you wisdom and instructions to be better and do better. You got to sit still, people of God. You just got to be still and know that He is God. That's scripture. Just be still. Um, oftentimes sheep going back to the tendency thing, why we need a shepherd, because sometimes we, we as sheep, all of us tend to want to wander yeah, and absolutely. want to go see things and go try things. That's and, good. and that's how sheep get uh, snatched up by bears and lions. That's how they drown and fall off cliffs and all kinds of stuff because they don't have someone guiding them and, and, and showing them the way and they just do stuff that that's just good. doesn't. Uh, mean well for them and it doesn't end well for them so we as a people have to allow the shepherd to do their work and one of the things pastor sierra was referencing on uh, sunday uh from, or referencing tonight from sunday what apostle wells was sharing with us put the pastors to work you can call you can text you can pull us to the side you can say i need help you can do these we have meetings set up even right now this week uh, and more to come because people are saying, I'm fed up. I'm not going to sit back here and try to act like everything is, is all going the way it That's needs good. to be. I need my pastor to speak That's life good. into me. And we have the ability to tap into the throne room to bring you a revelation that's going to change your life. And you have to believe That's that good. that That's good. is going to be what changes everything. Go ahead. That's good. You know, <laughs> I said that in the Holy Spirit, you know, um, uh, literally just dropped this in my spirit, man mm -hmm. of God. Like, you know, we're so used to telling people who appear to be our best friend or um, a close one or because they're our cousin. We're so used to telling them um, our secret desires or things that God has given us right. or our problems and our issues. And have you ever wondered that every time you tell a person that same situation or those problems, or you've been the other person on the other end receiving the problems yeah. and there's nothing that you could do because there was a lock and you needed a key. Yeah. And that person, I don't care how many times you whispered in their ear, you told them the situation that you're in, you told them how horrible it was. They could not unlock the issue. Mm -hmm. Your pastor, your shepherd is the gateway to your next. He and she is the Talk gateway to your success 
to your destiny being un, 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 revealed, right? Being revealed. And so this is why you have to get connected to them. Right. Because you can go to your shepherd, oh, whoever just, he or she may be, yes. and you're not going to get the jealousy. Because sometimes, whether you believe it or not, you can be telling somebody an idea or a vision, and they secretly don't want you to surpass them. And so because of that, what they do is they talk you out of it mm -hmm. or they don't support you mm -hmm. and you're leaning on their support. And so because you didn't get the support from that individual, mm -hmm. what you in turn did, because I've been there before, you walked away, you brushed your hand and now you're trying to go to something else. When God right. is like, that was the thing that was going to take you through. That was the thing that was going to open up the door to your financial breakthrough that you needed. Right. And even in that man of God, when you go to your shepherds, now this is both ways because now again, the shepherd need the sheep right? <laughs> as well. But you can go to your shepherds. The shepherds do, um, they, they make, they give you a path. Mm -hmm. um, they, they give you a plan. They make provision. And at the same time, they cover us. They protect us. Yeah. So if you, whether you believe it or not, because you belong to a house, that pastor has to do his job or her job, and they have to call out your name before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And just because of them calling out your name, you are covered. You are protected. You yes. have a covering over your life. So yes. that's why that accident, you avoided the accident. That's why when the officer pulled you over, you weren't the one that was a part of the statistics. This is why, people of God. Right. Right. Absolutely. Because there is there is a connection that you have with us as shepherds that you don't realize is ongoing and continually uh, blessing your life. And so, but there's some people that just say, oh, that's just, uh, you know, something else. Okay. All right. But we have called your name out. We've labored at the altar. We have uh, 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 pursued God in prayer. And we've literally said, God, bring this person back. There's people that come back that we've prayed for. Mm -hmm. It takes some time because naturally we want to see them come back tomorrow. But God's like, I'm, I'm going to process them during this time. Right. And then he brings them back. Amen. And some, and, and sometimes they realize they did leave me uh, prematurely and they become some of the best people that you ever met Absolutely. after that transition. Absolutely. So I'm talking to somebody that's watching tonight that needs to come back. You're, you're like that prodigal son. You need to come back. You you wandered way off the shepherd's field. Okay, now it's time to come back. You know where the field is at. You know how to get back here. Come on back. Stop prolonging this process. Come on back, my That's sister. Good. Come on back, my brother. This doesn't have to be a hard thing for you. Come on back. And the Lord is welcoming you in with open arms. And so is the shepherds. Amen. So is the body. We're welcoming you in with open arms. So if you've been out there and you don't have no direction, mm. we're giving it to you tonight. You need a shepherd. You, it's like driving at night without headlights. The shepherds are the headlights. That's the good. shepherds are the good tires. Good the shepherds are the gas in the tank. The shepherds are the steering wheel. We That's are good. all of that that you need to get to the next level. Just trust us. Don't trust the man as in like, this is a man filling this position. No, that's trust good. the God that is leading the man, Ooh, that's leading good. the woman. That's, that's the good. problem with us today. We only see so far as what the flesh is able to show us. But you got to tap into the spirit to see why you need the shepherd and the shepherd needs the sheep. All right. Pastor Sierra, this is this has been so, 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 so good. Is there anything in the comments that we need to um, yeah. hit up real quick? Well, I mean, I can't go back any further, but I know there was a lot of comments. Yeah. Um, people testifying, people just, you know, echoing, you know, the word that we're, they've received on tonight. A lot of people are just saying amen. Uh, I love Sister Tawana's comment. She says, amen, make that appointment. Yes. I know that's right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, AWC, I just want to let you all know, appointments are definitely coming for us. All right, this time... Uh, for a lot of us to uh, stop this run, okay, and, and take a seat. Yeah, you know, the one thing you can say for sure, that if you never, you don't leave a church and talk about the pastor and you didn't give him or her an opportunity right. uh, to do their job. And so if we get to that place where we just allow them to do the work, man of God, at least you can say you tried. The right. Bible says, the Father, the Lord himself says, try me now. Mm -hmm. um, see, will I not? Yeah, he's saying, come, you out. come to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, come come, ye all that are heavy uh, mm -hmm. laden. Come on, come. Try he's, me. he's saying, try he's me. saying, you sit there there because you throwing a fit because we haven't called your number or text your phone that's not what god is saying for us to necessarily do there is a responsibility on both ends and it's time for you to just come on in i received the call before bible study
study the night. One right. of our dear sisters who uh, we hadn't seen in some time, and they just called tonight out of nowhere. Wow. And, and we're expecting, what I say? We are expecting awesome. to see them back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Why? We don't count these people off because we don't know what life is taking you through. We don't know what you're going through in your individual life. But we know one thing, we're going to stay in touch and agree that the Lord is continuing to keep you. Yeah. Even those that just leave us with no explanation, we still pray for you, believe it or not. Believe it or we not. We still pray for believe those people. Not. And when you think that we're just all in a frenzy, no, man. The frenzy is that we are still connected <laughs> to the Spirit of God through prayer. Go ahead, woman of God. Uh, Sister Sharice is hilarious. She has several things on here. I'll say two of them. Sure. She says, I believe it's uh, real because, once again, I should have been taken out and grace and mercy and my pastor's praying for me yeah. and laying before God before me. Praying really just does changes things. Absolutely. Uh, she also says, Lord, 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 don't let nobody talk about your pastors to your face. I believe <laughs> Reese will come out. If you hilarious. talk about these pastors right here that's online, <laughs> you talk about these two, oh, Reese going to come out. Not Sharice, but Reese going to come out. I believe Peach is going to come out. Oh, uh-huh. I believe uh, Tay Tay going to come out. That's Tawana. Oh, all right. I, I believe Trina might come oh, out too. I, all right. So y'all don't don't touch thine anointing. Oh, Lord. And do, Lord. do them no harm. All right. Yes, we don't need no Peters. We, don't, we, we got them though. They here. <laughs> all right. Listen, people of God, let's praise God again for tonight awesome, um, awesome bible study and we thank god for our apostle who has delivered the third installment of feed my sheep uh, which was a uh, shepherd love our shepherd we do love mm-hmm. but shepherd needs sheep sheep need shepherd right. uh, this was the third installment of feed my sheep amen mm-hmm. for uh this series so we thank god for for that uh if you will find your way to giving and some of you already are giving right now we thank amen. god for you that are giving god bless um, you. but our cash app is all to worship center forward slash I'm sorry, dollar sign, Altar Worship Center is our cash app. Uh, you can give by PayPal, which is paypal.me forward slash Altar Worship Center. Amen. You can give either way. We didn't get necessarily a call in for Testimony Tuesday tonight, but I do want to share with you all. Our sister Sharice is going to be testifying very soon. Amen. Um, we have a few. We actually have Our sister Jessica. Jessica is going to be testifying very soon. We got some in the, in the soup pot. Pastor Sierra, that's just mm-hmm. stirring up and boiling right now. So there's going to be some powerful testimonies that will happen. Uh, so we are going to continue in Testimony Tuesday. Although we didn't hear from someone on the outside tonight specifically, trust me, we know the testimonies of the sheep tonight, and they are powerful. And we're going to hear them, and they're going to be released. So you stay tuned. Continue to come in here with us. And we thank God for you all that are continuing uh, to support this ministry in every way. I do want to yield real quickly um, to break away for announcements um, on this Friday. I want Pastor Sierra to let the people of God know there's something powerful that happens every last Friday of the month. Amen. And so, Pastor Sierra, I want to let you take it away and share what is going on at the end of this month on Friday. Amen. Listen, this coming Friday at 7 p.m., we will be hosting yet again another business and professional women. We have learned so much these past three uh, meetings, but on this particular Friday, I, we're getting even closer to just networking and learning a little bit more about one another's business and how we can grow it. I'm excited because this particular uh, Friday, we're going to strategize. We're going to sit down. We're going to plan out some things. We have an activity that we're going to do. And I promise you this time, we're going to have only an hour um, because uh, it literally is going to be a strategy moment for us to really build out and put these things here on paper about our business. There are so many of us that have so many type of businesses that are going on me i have like three right now pastor Corey. i know you can't really be there be there um, well i'm there <laughs> i'm there i just you know i do my security and, and media exactly and, and uh, uh other stuff exactly <laughs> y'all women be working me my <laughs> wife be working me but it's all good in the lord i love it Amen. um i want to say this too the event we went to the business um event we went to this saturday oh yeah two of the women that have attended bpw were right. there with us as well Absolutely. three i'm sorry three of the women that attends bpw came along with us on a weekend event so listen this ain't just a gathering this
this is uh, the building of God's people. Yeah, it's the um, accountability. Absolutely. Uh, to ensure the success of the things that you put out there in the atmosphere, the things you've been asking God for. Right. And it's a community event, so it's not secluded <laughs> to just your altar worship center members, right. uh, but it's everyone. So bring a friend, bring a sister, bring someone who's been talking about a plan. And if you're a good friend, um, you'll say, sis, come on out here. Let's right. get you amongst a community of women who uh, support your, your gifts and the things that you want to bring forward. So right. I'm looking forward to it. this again this Friday at 7 p.m. I am looking forward to seeing you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just um, I laughed a little bit because <clears throat> Sister Tawana said exactly. Don't try us. Try Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Chateau. OK. All right. Uh, real quickly as well. I'm going to bring another announcement because the woman of God was in here tonight. And I think she's still in here with us tonight as well. But Overseer uh, Weddles, Weddles is having her and her husband. They run the uh, ministry of O Morning Joy, O Morning Joy, uh, which is the end of your mourning, as in grieving, and the beginning of your joy. They're having a uh, an event at the end of the month in uh, October, actually. Right. And this event is for uh, the public, and the information is on your screen. But it is the turning of tables, uh, and they're having their first event, their first live event. Um, for the people of God to join. So you don't even have to necessarily go anywhere in particular. You can do this from your laptop. Virtually. You can do this from your um, your tablets or whatever mobile device you have. You can join in. Um, all the information is here. And if you want to connect with them, I believe Overseer Weddle is in here with us tonight. Um, her name is under uh, Sarika, <clears throat> Sarika uh, Taylor in uh, the Facebook comments. So if you uh, want to reach her specifically, she's in our comments tonight. Um, and their Facebook page is O Morning Joy, as it is spelled uh, here on the flyer. So go ahead and connect with them. If you know anyone that needs this or would just want to support, we want to support um, the people of God in this as well. So Amen. go ahead and um, find that information as well, if you will. We thank God for her, and thank you for your support, Overseer, tonight. We appreciate you uh, being in with us as the, well. The whole D.O. Wells ministry. <laughs> the whole entire D.O. Wells ministry. We thank God for you all. You are all so special. And they were all with us. Uh, most of them was with us this weekend as we journeyed through our fourth year anniversary. So we definitely appreciate you all in your time and your giving. Um, Pastor Sierra, I want to um, stop here. Is there any other announcements that we have? No, I just want to give um, a reminder uh, for those who were waiting for the information to give on tonight. Um, so we're going to put that information there on the screen and just give you an opportunity before we're closing out with prayer. Um, we would definitely want to give uh, be a blessing to the apostle too. So feel free to give um, by Cash App or PayPal. Um, this word was truly a blessing to me, and if it was a blessing to you, this is word and insight that we received from our overseer. Amen. 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 So, yes, people of God, as, as mentioned um, um, before, the Altar Worship Center giving is on your screen, and uh, we have Cash App and PayPal. And uh, for some of you, I even challenge you, too, as well. Meet us at the altar. Come to the Church of God, um, Church of the House of God, and, and come fellowship with God's people. Uh, we are doing everything safe that we possibly can to keep our gathering. And we would love to see you and your family come in as well. Uh, he's doing some amazing things in the house. Um, and so we would love for you to be a part of that as well. So uh, we thank you for your giving. We thank you for your generosity in this time as well. And we thank you for joining us and being with us on this Bible study night. All right. If that be all, I believe we've covered everything tonight. And um, we appreciate you all for being in with us. I believe that is everything, right, Pastor Sierra? We don't have anything else yep. to announce. All right, perfect. So, people of God, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer, um, and we thank God for you again. So, Father, we ask that you continue to bless your people, touch your sheep. Father, lead them, guide them in the way that they should go. And, Father, we thank you for shepherds that are after your own heart, pastors that are after your own heart, God. Oh, the five-four ministry, God, being um, continually together to lead the body forward, to continue to heal the body, bring the body together together. For your name's sake, God, we thank you for these that have gathered on here tonight. And for those that are giving, we thank you, God, for them 
being able to give because you have provided to their lives. Father, we ask that you continue to heal our sisters and our brothers that are going through ailments, sickness, affliction of any kind. We ask that you continue to keep your hand upon them. Father, we thank you, oh God, for the healing of the body, for the healing of the mind, for the bringing together uh, the pieces of the broken heart. We thank you, Father, for clarity for those that have been seeking understanding. We thank you, Father, that there has been something said on tonight that will uh, heal that person, God, that is going and tossed to and fro all over the place, God. We pray that there has been a word that has been released unto their soul and released unto their mind, released unto their heart, oh God, to make a sound decision to follow you, to be planted in, in, in God in your house, oh Father. We thank you, God, that these people have sought fit to seek your face tonight, God, and to open up the word tonight, God, and to find understanding, find clarity, find reason to live and not die. God, we thank you, oh God, for the House of Altar Worship Center and all that are joined together in this house. And we thank you for those that are on their way. We know that there are many more that are going to join this band of fellowship, God, and help us to build your church. We thank you, Father, for this and so many more things. We ask that you bless us, the pastors, and continue to keep us sharp and wise and strengthened, God, in your word. And Father, we ask that you continue to bring our sheep up to a new level. Let us not be settled, God. Let us not get stuck in the mud. Let us not wander so far off that we can't get back. But sheep uh, need shepherd and shepherd needs sheep. So bring us both together in only the way that you can, God. We thank you for those that are coming back. We thank you for those that are ground, grounded in the truth, Father, that are continually staying in your word. And Father, all of this is to say we glorify your name. We love you and we need you, oh God. And so for that, we give you praise. For that, we give you glory. For that, we give you honor. For it is all yours. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, we thank you again for being with us. And we love you so, so much. Amen. Uh, I want to invite you out. Pastor, give them the address to the church so we can know where we're going to gather on Sunday morning. Amen. We'll see you this Sunday at 10 a.m. for prayer yes. or 1030 for service. And you can meet us at 2806 North 22nd Street. Right. Um, right north of Ybor City. Right north <laughs> of Ybor City. Uh, and so we can't wait to see you. Amen. Come, let's fill these seats up. Let's fill the house up with praise. Let's glorify God together. I'm 1030 ready. a.m. or 10 a.m. for intercessory prayer. Excuse me. 1030 a.m. for worship service. We would love to see you there. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your uh, significant others, and let's glorify the Lord together. Amen? Amen. We we'll see you all then. Guys, we love you so much. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you then. Good night. God bless you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank With everything inside of us, we say thank you.